Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. The trouble first erupted in eastern Ladakh between India and China when Chinese PLA came in there, sort of unannounced and unwelcome. And after that, one of the first rounds of conversations, former conversations that took place was bit at high enough level, was between our respective defense minister. So defense minister Raksha Mantri Rajna Singh then met his Chinese counterpart in Moscow. And apparently he told him something like that there is a confusion saying but then that when two people fight, they should dig two graves because ultimately both will suffer. So what's the point of fighting? Something like that. The interesting thing is that if he were to meet his counterpart again, if he were to meet his counterpart again, there'll be questions about who will he meet? Because since then, he's also already met a third counterpart. Because the first one who he met the first time was Wei Fenghe. Pardon my very imperfect pronunciations of Chinese names. I will try to learn. I will also, I will, I also try Google, but it's not easy. So please forgive me and pardon me. And if they are Chinese listeners or people listening from China or people who know Chinese language, I, I admit to my inadequacy. So the first defense minister who was his interlocutor, Rajna thinks was Wei Fenghe. Soon enough, he had lost his job. He retired and went into disrepute and in the course of time was charged with corruption. Then his successor, his successor, Li Shangfu. Li Shangfu is again, is a minister, a minister for defense with whom Rajna Singh had a bunch of meetings. Now, just recently in Laos, just weeks back in Laos, he had another out, round of meetings with the current defense minister, Dong Jun, his admiral Dong Jun, the, the previous one, the previous one, Li Shangfu, was a general. The one before that, one before that, Wei Fenghe, he was from the rocket forces, PLA rocket forces, very elite. From there, he had been promoted to general and made defense minister. Now, the third one, Rajnath Singh, by his second tenure, has already met three defense ministers and chances are that the next time he might be meeting a fourth one because now there is a lot of buzz and stories in the Western press, including and especially from Dimitri Sevastopolo, who is now in Washington, but who is considered to be a very authoritative voice on what's happening in China. He has reported and then many other global media organizations have reported and the Chinese Government has denied it, but denied it sort of in the Chinese way. I will come to that as we go along. So, Dimitri Sevastopolo has, has reported that Admiral Dong Jun, who is the current defense minister, he is also under investigation. He is also under investigation, not being seen. He did not meet his American counterpart just recently at Laos, a meeting that was expected to happen because, remember, in 2022, Nancy Pelosi had gone to Taiwan, 25 years after a US House Speaker had gone to Taiwan and, and the Chinese government had got very angry and they had broken their military to military communication with the US. That was restored after Xi Jinping and Joe Biden met at Hawaii. So those, those connections had been re-established. And the Chinese defense minister and Lloyd Austin had met in the past. Now, at Laos, it did not happen. And that set tongues wagging because that's how a lot of the news comes out of China. It's widely understood now or believed that Dong, Dong Jun also is under, un, under a shadow now and possibly on your way out. And soon you might see a new defense minister. So when this question came up in front of the Chinese defense ministry spokesperson, Wu, Wu Qian, he dismissed it. He said this was pure speculation and completely wrong. He also called it a sheer fabrication, pure fabrication. And then went on to add, Wu, the spokesman went on to add, and I quote from his statement at the press conference, that we are strongly dissatisfied with such slanderous behavior. The fact is that the transcript, official transcript of that press conference that was released, these comments were missing. 
So you can draw your own conclusions from what was said, but what remained unprinted or unrecorded, said but unprinted and unrecorded. So the general impression is that the third defense minister in succession has gone in China. However, this is a more complex story than one defense minister going after another because in the Chinese system, as we will explain as we go along, and that's the real clutter. Defense minister really has no power. Defense minister in the Chinese system does not have any budget, has no control over defense budgets, has no control over any troops. All of that power resides in the Central Military Commission and here also there are two Central Military Commissions. One of the Chinese Communist Party and second of the Chinese government. Interesting thing, again these things happen in China, the membership of the two commissions is exactly the same. It's exactly the same numbers. What is the purpose of having two commissions, one, one belonging to the party and one belonging to the to, to the government, that is so that because the party owns everything, the party can keep an eye on what the government is doing. So we'll talk a bit more about this complexity as we go on. This is a more complex situation because just as there is a shadow on the defense minister, on the new defense minister, although the Chinese are denying it, the Chinese have confirmed another departure and that departure actually is more important. That's also an admiral. Dong Jun is, a, uh, is an admiral. The other departure is also an admiral who wasn't quite an admiral and that is what makes it an even more important firing in China. Again, it's a firing on charges of impropriety. They don't say corruption. It could be corruption. It could be disloyalty. They call it serious violation of discipline. And in this case, they have made an official statement. That's Admiral Miao Hua. Now, who's Admiral Miao Hua? And how can we say that his firing is more significant, will be more significant, even if the defense minister who speculated to have been either fired or under a shadow or under investigation, even if he's fired? Because in the Chinese system, a member of the Central Military Commission is much more powerful than the defense minister. And that is what Miao Hua is one of the three members of each central military commission. I told you the party has a military commission, the government has a military commission, it's the same personnel in both. Miao Hua is, a, is one of the members. Each central military commission has the chief, Xi Jinping, two vice chair, chairmen, I will give you the names as we go along, and three members. So Miao, Miao Hua, Admiral Miao Hua is one of those three members. Now Admiral Miao Hua, as I told you just now, is not, not he did not start out being an admiral. He was brought into the naval rank. Very interesting story. He was a camp for follower of Xi Jinping at the party level. He's a party commissar. He's a political commissar. In the Chinese system, every unit of the Chinese government, in fact, every unit of a Chinese corporate has a par party commissar sitting there. The party supervises everything. In the armed forces, it's very important. So in the armed forces, the real power always resides in the political commissar. Miao Hua is one of those political commissars. He worked with Xi Jinping since Xi Jinping was a deputy, deputy provisional party chief in Fujian province. Since then, he was a loyalist of Xi Jinping and Xi Jinping as he came to power. And after that, he started cleaning up big time, cleaning up big time the armed forces, the PLA, uh, the PLA forces, because he said there is a lot of corruption there. And he, he saw a lot of corruption in the departments of arms procurement and development and said that he was going to clean it up. It was in that process that he fired from the, from the Chinese Central Military Commission, Miao Hua's predecessor and appointed Miao Hua there, sort of double promoted him, promoted him straight, straight to admiral. He was in the army, from army, he promoted him to admiral as if he was in the navy, but that doesn't matter because he was a political commissar. So in the Chinese Central Military Commission, he became a primary military commissar among the three members. That's the reason he's so powerful and that's the reason any action against him is seen to be that much more significant. And now as I read upon this, there are some interesting references because these also hark back to how, how this war on corruption was started, or war on, I should put it in quotes, corruption, because sometimes, sometimes cases of corruption are also another name for suspicions of disloyalty to the big boss. 
right? Because at a big military gathering at Yan'an, Yan'an is a place that's that's revered for for its association with Mao's revolution. There, Xi Jinping said, and I quote from the transcripts, he said, he said, be clear the guns must always stay in the hands of those who are reliable and loyal to the party. This he was saying, quoting something that Mao has said. So this was a Maoism. A Maoism. And, and then he went on to say, be clear that corrupt elements must not be allowed to hide inside the body of the military. As he said that, Admiral Mia Hua was sitting in the audience. So the message was there and now Mia Hua is out. I would say it is the most senior and the most powerful firing in the Chinese military setup. He is definitely more powerful than the defense minister. Also, he will be more powerful than the two rocket force generals that Xi Jinping had fired earlier last year, in the summer of last year. These were generals Li Yuchao, they were, they were fired in July 2023 last year. General Li Yuchao, the head of the rocket forces. Rocket forces, as, as I told you, are the elite of the elite. They control all the missiles, long-range artillery, nukes in all three dimensions, land, air, water, submarines, everywhere. So General Li Yuchao, the head, the commander of the rocket forces, he was fired and his deputy, General Liu Guangbin, he was fired as well, again on charges of corruption. These two were fired and they disappeared. Around the time they were fired, news also appeared that a former deputy commander of rocket forces, that is Wu Guohua, he had suddenly died. Now a Chinese website initially said that he had died of cancer, but soon enough that story was taken down. Once again, you can do your own guesswork. But the general belief is that that was also some kind of an association with corruption. How the death took place, nobody quite knows. In fact, it was around this time, the time when these generals were fired, that the Chinese military issued a call. They made a public call for new information from whoever brings it on possible corruption in the armed forces, in PLA, in, in all parts of PLA, dating back to 2017. It is when something like this is put out that you know that a kind of inquisition is on. Inquisition is on, get evidence, get rumors, get whatever and fix all your rivals. It was around this time that almost the entire leadership of the rocket forces was thrown out. Then see who were the people appointed in their place. So the new commander was Admiral Wang Hubin who had been deputy chief of navy he had now become the head of rocket forces and his new deputy was chu shi sheng is actually technically the deputy of admiral wang hubin but actually ranked higher than him and why is he ranked higher than him because he's a political person he's a political commissar always the political commissar has more power but also he's a full member of the chinese Communist Party's Central Committee, full voting member of the CC of the Chinese Communist Party, which Admiral Hubin is not. So once again, in that system, power comes from the party. So the guy who comes from the party has more power than the guy who's a mere professional. And that is how this big change has taken place. Now, rocket forces are also very close to the heart of Xi Jinping because when he came to power, one of the first things he did by way of reforming, his way of reforming the military was to set up the rocket forces command. And his idea was that this was essential to the modernization of the PLA because since 1966, in 1966, shortly after the Chinese successfully tested their nuclear weapons, they had put their nuclear assets under a secondary artillery core. So secondary artillery core had continued, continued on to grow. There were hundreds of missiles, ICBMs, Mervin missiles, all kinds of things. The Chinese built SSBNs, submarines carrying missiles, etc, etc, etc. All of this, until Xi Jinping came, were under secondary artillery core founded in 1966 at the peak of Mao still. This he converted into Rocket Forces Command. That is why he sees Rocket Forces Command as his own creation and something very close to his heart. So there is a quote from him, very said, very said at the formation of the Rocket Forces Command. He said, Rocket Forces Command is a core of our national strategic deterrent. Now you know about all the other cases. Chin Gang, who was a Chinese foreign minister, 
he disappeared in his case it was not so much corruption as inappropriate behavior because apparently he had had an inappropriate or illicit relationship with a woman a woman journalist a tv anchor in washington when he was the ambassador there and allegations were that that there was a there was a child produced as as a result of that liaison so he disappeared for quite some time in the course of time news came out that he was fired and then went into oblivion so that was the other one now while all this is going on more news is breaking out now these stories the suspension of miao hua and fairly credible stories on the investigations against defense minister admiral dong jun these have come in the week when a former chairman of bank of china this is lin liang the former chairman of bank of china also is very senior party functionary he's been convic convicted of bribe taking of taking a bribe of 16.7 million dollars equivalent which is about say 141 142 crore rupees over his lifetime he's been convicted and handed out a death sentence with a two year deferral so he's got two years to sort out his issues meanwhile his properties and assets have been confiscated by the state and he will be executed two years from now so that death sentence has gone out so once again because of the lack of transparency all of this leads to rumors and we've said this multiple times that in a system where there is no transparency where nothing authentic comes out all rumors are generally seem to be true and and the worst rumors are seen to be the truest so what i will do to you is i will quote tweets to you that ram emanuel the american ambassador to japan he had put out earlier earlier when there was mysteries about chin gang and, and 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 that crew the initial lot of cabinet level firings you will see his tweets on your screen and he said first foreign minister chin gang goes missing then the rocket forces commanders go missing and now defense minister li, li shangfu hasn't been seen in public for two weeks and he ended with a hashtag mystery in beijing building now in conclusion i bring you back to the story of this mystery of the chinese military commissions i told you there are two military commissions one is the military commission of the party second is the military commission of the government so military commission of the party that is the ccp cmc chinese communist party central military commission this is the 20th the current cmc of the ccp is the 20th so we are now living with the 20th ccp central military commission at the same time we have the 14th people's republic of china central military commission that is because one came first the other came later and this new formal arrangement of coexistence and one overseeing the other this was formalized in 1954 when the new constitutional arrangement came in and this has continued sort of in parallel except in xi jinping's case everything has become uniform and all membership has become uniform so i will tell you the names now and then you tell me if you find something amiss or if you catch something interesting there the chairman in each case chairman vice chairman members are the same so i don't have to repeat these names twice and and show you my struggles with pronunciation of chinese names so the chairman of both is xi jinping vice chairman of both are jiang yuxia and he and he waidong and members that's the key thing members of these chinese military commissions the two military commissions one of the party one of the government one of cpc chinese communist party of china one of prc people's republic of china that members are li jengli jiang shenmin and miao hua did you catch something so one is now missing right agatha christie may have said and then there was none in this case you could say and then there wasn't one so miao hua is now gone it will be replaced by somebody else however this arrangement intrigues me also because if one lot of people have to run everything and there is a hierarchy that is the chinese communist party central military commission then why do you need this government's central Mil military commission also which has the same personnel and when there is a clear hierarchy this is a bit like me reporting to myself right or you report reporting to yourself but these are things that the chinese do why do they do these things well interesting people do these things and this reminds me of our singer actor film producer director etc etc kishore kumar so there is that famous story about kishore kumar where he wanted to make a film and and he gave advertisements for various people to come and audition somebody came and said i want to provide these services 
I want to meet the producer. So he said, meet me, I'm the producer. He said, all right. Then the next guy came and he said, I want to be an assistant director. I want to meet the director. He said, wait, go to the other table in the same room. So the guy goes to the other table and Kishore Kumar moves to the other table and he says, I am the director, talk to me. So I am the director, I am the producer, I am the music director, I am the lyricist, stuff like that. So you can create a hierarchy within yourself. So when you have the power of the Chinese Communist Party, you can do these really intriguing things as well and confuse the world thoroughly and at the same time keep them busy with these purges and these supposed anti-corruption actions.